Hello everybody, this is Detecting Daddy, and welcome back to World Coin Wednesday. What you're looking at is three plastic bowls full of, of course, world coins. We have Middle Eastern, Asian, and Israel. If I remember from the last video, I had, what, seven or eight totes in another bag. The bag was all Israeli coins. Well, all of that is gone, and this is what's left. I want to show you what I have, uh found so far all the other ones uh the stacks that were to the side the three piles those have all been put in with their respective uh areas as far as the collection and i'll probably show that at the end of the video but let me show you what i found out of all the other bowls and bags and totes of coins that i had from the last video so here they are right here there's really not much um surprisingly we do have one from thailand in 1942 and we got one from Ethiopia, which was quite interesting trying to figure that out. That was that was quite interesting. And these are a lot of the ones that um, I had mentioned before, a lot more research. And that's why I got this as part two research video. Another one from Egypt, which was really confusing. Uh, and then Russia actually wasn't that bad. Determining the mint marks on these here was. And I don't know if um, it has right here Moscow. And then I have... Uh, another one there, which is St. Petersburg, and it's literally on the obverse. There's a small symbol. It's either MM for Moscow, or it's four different letters, and I can't quote them right now, that uh, are for St. Petersburg. And if you hear a cat crying, that is my cat, who is acting like he is starving. He's not. Um, as far as... A few other things that I found from the last video that I want to touch upon. One was this right here. Uh, this is Chinese in origin. I think I showed this in the last video. Uh, however, it um, is determined to be a religious medallion, believe it or not, from the, about the 1950s. So definitely not as old as I thought it might have been and not a coin at all, but still pretty cool. The other one, I believe I'd showed this right here. And as you can see on it, it is an Ottoman hammered silver, 14th or 15th century. <clears throat> and how uh, this came, I came to find out about this is uh, Stacks and Bowers has come to Boston. And of course, I had to, you know, see if I can get to know some of the people that work there. Well, I did. Uh, one of the guys' names is Stanley. <laughs> and my name is Stanley. So we immediately hit it off and ended up discussing a little bit about world coins. He was excited to know that I was into them and said, if you ever got a question on something, let me know. I'd be, feel, be glad to help. So I did. It took him all of about 30 to 45 seconds to determine this was an Ottoman coin around the 14th or 15th centuries. Uh, and it was silver. It's uh, very light silver. It's not like 90%. It's probably like 20% or something. But really, really cool. One of the oldest coins I have. Oh, excuse me. I'm fighting a cold, so I sound kind of stuffy. But that, to me, was absolutely fascinating. Um that he was so easily um i've been looking for pictures to see if i can you know get a more definitive date and i haven't had any luck yet so i'm still working on this one here this one's just going to go into a, a flip or something and get titled and put in with chinese coins i guess or tokens uh the rest of these are all going to be put into the collection these ones here i am going to be working on slowly they're going to take a little while um to get through as far as determine which country they're from. Well, these ones we already know, Israel, but deciphering those is not easy either. And it's something that it's, this is probably going to be like a Saturday project all day, spend eight, 10 hours just working on nothing but these here to get them done. And that'll probably be in part three of this video. And that'll end up, uh, end all of the research of this. One second. Okay, everybody, it's actually later on in the same day. I hope I don't sound as stuffy as I've been taking some medicine. Uh, and hopefully we get a little bit of quiet from my cat, who is crying like crazy. I just wanted to apologize for that. But I want to give you a quick look at the um, amount of coins that I have here for the World Coins. And I literally have them just sitting on whatever letters they are. And this is kind of a glance of it. Real quickly, nothing too dramatic. I don't think I have them sorted much through uh, H, so I'm not going to pull them all out. Just want to give you a quick glance um, and let you know, show you how it's going, the way I'm doing it. If you have any suggestions on better ways, especially on how to label these, 
as you can see, like these things getting bent up and all that, and it's it's kind of annoying. But for now, it works until I find a another uh, method of doing it. Or if you guys have an idea, please let me know. I'm not going to keep this video going much longer. Um, I actually have already been working on some of the three bowls of coins that you've seen already. So that video there is actually already in the works as I'm finishing this one up. So pretty cool. Um, so part three, this will be coming out next Wednesday. And I hope you guys are enjoying these here as I am having a blast. The only thing is, is one, of course, it is a lot of research to get to this point. Um, you know, determining, you know, which countries they're from, uh, which emperor it is at times, what year it is, or how to decipher how to find the year. Like uh, with some uh, ch Japanese coins, you have to find the emperor, and it starts off with what year the emperor is. Like if uh, I think uh, it's 1989 was uh, the latest emperor, and 20 years from then is, you know, 2009. But you have to subtract one because the first year is counted as one, not zero. So instead of being 2009, it would actually be 2008. So learning all of that is actually exciting. Uh, learning how to read the different letters. I have cards and notes and things like that that I constantly go over to try and learn as much of this as possible. And it's not easy. Uh, it's great, you know, when I see a Chinese coin that actually has a date on it. And the only thing I need to do at that point there is find out... What denomination it is it's great it's nice and easy not as challenging and uh the challenge is actually part of the reason why i like this so much so yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and stop jibber jabbering and end this video and hope you guys are enjoying it as much as i am making them uh, i hope you're enjoying this journey that i'm going on and if you do give it a, a like subscribe thumbs up share all that good jazz until next time happy hunting